Hi, welcome to Nareesh IT. This is Kishore, and now I'm going to discuss about uh, destructors. Okay, in previous sessions we have discussed uh, what is a constructor and how this one is working, and I have completed that. What is a default constructor, parameterized constructor, and copy constructor? Now I'm going to discuss about destructor. Now what is a destructor? Okay, to know about the destructor, first of all we have to learn about constructor. Constructor is used for what? Constructing the object data. Means what? Every object is having data members. Data members means what? Nothing but generally variables. And variables are going to store in stack or heap based on the declaration type. Now the point, either it is stack or heap. Okay, they are nothing but memory areas. No? That means they need some memory. That is why whenever an object is created, it is going to occupy some memory. That means whenever a constructor is executed, object is defined. That is why memory is allocated. Now to release this memory or to delete this memory, we are using the destructor concept. That is why constructors constructs the memory, constructor construct the memory or constructor construct the object data and destructor is used to delete this memory created by the constructor. That is why a destructor is a function. It is also one of the function, okay, special member function which is used to delete the memory created by the constructor. That is why the, it is called destructor. Generally destructor means what destroy. Destroy means what deletion. That is why it is a good practice to use destructors in our program because of it is automatically releasing the memory occupied by the constructor. Next, what are, what are the rules for destructors? What are the rules for destructors? Now the first rule for destructor is, okay, the major rule for destructor is the destructor name should be equivalent to the class name. It is the first common rule. Already we have discussed in constructor. The constructor name should be equivalent or similar to the class name. And here also the destructor name should be similar to the class name okay, and followed by or preceded by tilde operator. Here the name should be similar to the class name preceded by tilde operator. Then only your compiler understands it is a destructor. For example, suppose class sample. Now it is the sample class and here sample. Now something is there. Okay, Here see this any tilde symbol is there? No. Now class name sample, function name sample. That is why it is called what? Constructor. Okay. Now it is called constructor. Now what is destructor? Destructor name also similar to the class name. That is why sample. Okay. Now it is looking to be a constructor, but I want to declare a destructor. That is why you should be preceded with the tilde operator. That is all. Now this one is called destructor. Okay. That is why the major difference between constructor and destructor is what? Constructor never contains the tilde operator, but every destructor should have to start with the tilde operator. It is the most major difference between constructor and destructor. Next, here another important rule. Okay, another important rule is what? It should be declared in public area. Already we have discussed constructor also declared in public area, and destructor also declared in public area. Otherwise, it is not invoked. Okay, that's why. Destructor should be declared in public area. It is the another rule. Next, another major important thing. Constructor is having arguments. Constructor may or may not have the arguments. That is why here arguments are may be or may not optional. But here arguments never. It is the another important rule. Constructor may or may not have the arguments. But destructor never contains any arguments. Okay. Due to this what happens? Suppose this is a constructor now. Now can I send one argument? Okay, yes. In second, second constructor, 
I can send two arguments in third one three argument like this that is why it is possible to define several constructors which is called constructor overloading which is called constructor overloading. For example, here only one argument I want to send sample of A another constructor sample of A comma B. Now, watch it here it is constructor with one argument it is constructor with two arguments, but here the problem is destructor never contains the argument no? that is why it is not possible to overload the destructors ok. It is another important rule now destructors never participate in overloading next another important thing as usual constructor never contains a written data type or written value as usual destructor also never contains never contains or never returns a written value the same rule is applied for both constructor and destructor clear that is why here it is another important rule and it is also make a implicit call to the new and delete operator it is also calls automatically for the new and delete operators ok. These are the rules and regulations for destructors ok. It is how to define a destructor in our program ok. Now, I will show you how to create a destructor and constructor in a program and here one more thing they also not participated in inheritance ok. Already constructors never participate in inheritance and here also destructor never participate directly in inheritance and they should not be called with the object name normal member functions are called with what object name followed by dot operator and destructor never called with the object name followed by dot operator ok. And now, I will show you how to work with destructor first uh, common header files hash include io stream dot h next hash include conio dot h now class sample ok here I want to declare data members that is why int a comma b two data members and the rule for constructor and destructor they should be declared in public that is why first is sample now what it is it is a constructor ok. Now, here a equal to for example, 10 b equal to for example, 20. Now, here a initialized with 10 b initialized with 20 next. Now, I am going to write the destructor sample and it is called destructor and here I want to print a value c out a equal to a and l and here c out b equal to b and l now class completed that is all here what it is constructor which construct the object data and here it is going to print that means I want to print this a and b data using the destructor now watch this it is the main function it is the main function first of all I want to create a object sample yes now s is the what object when object is created what happens constructor is invoked means what this constructor is activated when constructor is invoked a value becomes 10 b value becomes 20 that is why here in stack now the memory allocated for s and a value becomes 10 b value becomes 20 and totally they are going to occupy 2 into 2 bytes means 4 bytes that is why here totally a and b are integers now that is why they are going to occupy 2 into 2 bytes 16 bit compiler in a 16 bit compiler that is why it is going to take 4 bytes ok. Now, when the object is created automatically object data is initialized which is called automatic initialization means without calling the function without calling any function 
the members are initialized you know, that is why it is called automatic initialization. Next, now the point is okay, I want to erase this data, I want to erase this data, but here for erasing this data okay, there is no special function, I want to use the destructor. Next, when the destructor is executed, when the object is deleted, that is why now the destructor is going to delete the object, delete the object means what A and B values are going to be deleted, how this one is possible means here just uh, close the bracket, okay. everybody knows. When a bracket is closed, what happens? The local variables are going to delete from memory, here local variable means what? S, because of S is a object, object meaning is what? It is a variable of type class, okay. S is a object of type class, that is why S is what? Variable, that means what? Now it is declared inside the main function, when it is declared inside a function or block what it is called? Local variable. Now, when local variable lifetime or availability is what? Until that block is executed, means now the block is executed now, now automatically this object is deleted. When it is deleted, okay, here what it is? Destructor. Destructor is having what code? A value, B value. Now, it is going to show the data, okay. That means what? The object is going to be deleted, okay. Here, the object values are going to be deleted. Before going to delete the data, it is going to print the A and B. That is why, here it is better to use get CH here, okay. Now, get CH. Now, what happens? When this bracket is closed, it is going to be executed now. That is why first A value printed, later value printed, later program stopped. That is why on the screen you are having A value 10, B value 20. Here watch it, only object is created. When object is created, automatically constructor is executed. When object is deleted, means destructor working. That is why here there is no need of function callings. It is how the destructor is working. That is why constructor construct the object data and destructor destructs the object data. Means, it is especially designed to delete the memory allocated by the constructor. That means, objects. That is why destructor is a special member function. Destructor is a special member function whose name is similar to the class name follow, preceded by tilde operator and it is used to destroy the memory allocated by the constructor means it is used to delete the object created by the constructors. It is how to work with the destructor in our programming, okay. Thank you for watching. In next session, we are going for another examples. Thank you. Thank you.